what, what are the fundamental things to keep in mind when considering kayak hunting? Uh, I actually just recently wrote an article and I'll read a couple. There's like five things I think on here. And the number one thing is safety above everything else. So the thing that people have to understand is when you're going out on the water in a boat early in the morning into places where if you're doing it right, there should not be anybody around. Um, you, you have to depend on yourself. Like there, if you fall in the water, nobody's going to be there to help you. It's four o'clock in the morning. Nobody's going to be there. You know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. There's not going to be just a random bass fisherman at four o'clock in the morning. That's going to be able to hear you scream. Um, so safety is the biggest thing. And, uh, there's a couple ways that you can, you know, maintain that safety. And number one is I keep a life jacket on board. I always have. Um, but every single time I go out, I'm like, man, what if this is the time that I just like hit a rock or, or, you know, a gust of wind like surprises me or, or whatever, you know, and I, and I go overboard and I just can't, I don't like that idea, especially when you, when you think about hunting boots, if you're wearing rubber boots, heavy clothes, like if you fall in the water and that stuff gets water in yeah. it, you're, you're done for. Yeah. And so, um, one of the greatest things that I've seen is the, uh, um, Onyx, uh, PFDs, basically the, the, um, CO2 activated ones where you, you know, when it hits the water or whatever, it inflates, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't, um, require a whole lot of bulk on you. So, um, that's been the biggest thing for me is when I'm going in, you know, a big heavy life jacket is almost more unsafe than not yeah. wearing one, you know, right. cause you, you have to have, be able to move. And, um, anyway, so that's number one thing. Um, number two thing is to always, you know, be able to have, ha always have somebody that knows where you're going. Right. Um, technology is huge right now. Um, you can pretty much do anything. You can share your location with your wife, with your friends, with your parents, some family member, somebody to know like, Hey, if, if I don't text you at this time, then that means that something's something's wrong or I've shot a deer or something like that. You know, I mean, but always have that person that you're communicating with. My wife has my location and my dad has my location. That's really great advice. Just in general, that's not just kayak, you know, Absolutely. hunting any, anytime you're on public land and somebody might not know the spot you're going to. It's great advice. Yeah. So that's, that's the number one thing is safety. You always want to think about safety. Um, especially when you talk about getting on the water in the cold weather. Um, number two is have a success plan. Um, and I have three bullet points right here. So if you are using a, um, a heavy duty kayak, you know, it may just be as easy to just throw a deer on top of the kayak and go. Um, but most people are not, most people are using the cheap Walmart sun dolphin kayaks or something like that. And that's great. Like whatever it takes to get you out there. Um, but have a success plan. If you were to kill a deer, what are you going to do next? You know, so there's three different ways you can do it. You can pack it out, um, just quarter it up right there in the field, um, put it in, in, uh, game bags and put it in, in your boat somewhere. I mean, that significantly decreases yeah. the, uh, the weight of the animal. Um, the number two thing is you could tow a raft. So, um, I actually had this idea before any of the ideas that I ever had was like, okay, if I'm successful, how am I going to get this deer out? At the time, I didn't know if my kayak would actually do it with the kayak that I had. And so I was like, well, I could just take an inflatable raft and put it in the hole somewhere, um, pack it away with a pump or something like that. And if I kill something, just inflate it up and throw it in the raft and tow it behind. So that's the number two option. Um, always, always a good, you know, that would work. I promised you it would work. Mm -hmm. Um, third is a life jacket method. So I, I would not personally try this, but people have done it and done it well. A guy named, uh, uh, Shane Simpson, who is uh, big in the Turkey world. He's actually done this with a deer where he just threw a, a life jacket over, uh, like put it on the deer. Like it was a human. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. They're built to Haul 300 pounds and deer's yeah. not going to weigh that. So, yeah. So, I mean, the water resistance might be a problem as you're trying to paddle. <laughs> that's, that's my, that's my worry is I'm like, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to drag a deer through water. Yeah. That would just Yeah. Be... Even though it's floating, that's dead weight, man. Yeah. So, um, important thing with that is, um, 
not to gut the deer. Don't gut the deer before you do that. Mm. Um, because if you do that cavity will fill up with water and it's just going to make it even heavier. So, um, yeah. And also it'll, it'll get there and get inside the meat and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. From the meat that. perspective, I definitely wouldn't do that. Yep. And so the, the last thing is just throw it on top of the boat and go, which is what I've done every time. Um, super easy. If you have a kayak that has a weight capacity and also has enough space, um, to put an animal, it's super easy to do it, man. And that's what I've done every single time. I love, like, for me, the reason why I do it is I'll, I'll drag a deer a long ways just to be able to experience the paddle out because mm-hmm. it's just fun. Like, it's just it's just so much fun. Yeah, to, for sure. Like, be paddling and see that deer laying in front of you, and it's just cool. Um, all right, so the number three thing, number three uh, thing that I would do is carry lots of leashes. So um, you are carrying in a lot of gear. You've got a backpack, you've got a, a stand if you're using a stand or, um, you know, I, I don't do that anymore. So I use the saddle. Um, and so I'm wearing that. So I don't have to have a leash for that. But you've got a, a gun or a bow. You've got all kinds of stuff that you're carrying in there with you that if you were to flip the boat or if you were to just hit a big, you know, log or something and God forbid something fall out, uh, you could be in you could be in bad sorts right there. I've actually been there with my dad. He uh, he flipped his boat. We didn't have any leashes. He lost his gun into the bottom of the lake. Um, his bag fell in. His He was using a climber at that time. Uh, his climber fell in. Luckily, we were able to retrieve everything except for the gun, uh, but we eventually got that um, with an anchor. It was pretty cool. We fished it out of the bottom of the lake. That was pretty sweet. Um, I've been but, there, too. My first time, I used to kayak and canoe a ton, and my first time out on the boat, my wife and I uh, hit in a, in a bend of a stream, hit a log that was submerged. And as soon as you get sideways on a stream, you're screwed. And so the kayak took on water and I watched all my stuff go downstream. And we spent the next 45 minutes, well, after I got the boat uh, out of the four foot deep uh, turn that we were in, you know, <laughs> once I got it on the bank and, and emptied out the water, I had to fish out everything out of the stream that I could find. My wife, I also learned that uh, we, th- we were very new to this at the time. Uh, we also learned the hard way that you don't kayak and flip flops because <laughs> we never saw her shoes again. <laughs> nope. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's yeah. a lot of variables that can go wrong in this. Um, so it's just best to be prepared for the worst. You know, I, and I'll throw in people get overconfident thinking that they're good swimmers, but here's the thing. If you flip, you don't know what your head's going to hit. And you're not wearing a helmet when you're kayaking, um, especially in the hunting scenario. And, you know, if your head hits a a log or something, you get knocked out, you're done. That's it. So, you know, super important to even if you don't, you know, even if you feel really comfortable because nobody's out or the water's, you know, glass. um, if, If you were to hit something or, I mean, you never know, dude, freak accident, something could come out of the water and scare you and you flip the boat yourself, you know, and if, if you hit a rock or a log and you're, you hit your head, you're done. That's it. Dude, in Kentucky, uh, where I hunt in Kentucky, there's a bunch of Asian carp on this river. Yeah. And, and those things, dude, they make me so nervous at early in the morning. I will not go like all out, you know, cause yeah, I'm like, cause- be waiting on one of those Asian cart to come and slap me in the face. Filling you know? a boat with a protein you didn't anticipate. Exactly. <laughs> um, so in terms of leashes, you can buy like Yak Gear or whatever um, brand of leashes, or you could just buy a bunch of paracord and cheap carabiners and yeah, keep all that stuff. Keep it in your boat. That way, if you are to ever flip over, everything will be still attached to the boat. Um, number four thing is walk before you paddle. So... Um, I try to walk every area that I'm going to hunt. I try to go and walk it before I hunt it and, or before I paddle to it. That doesn't mean if I'm doing it right, I'm going to be in areas where you cannot walk to, but I want to go to the closest possible access point of this particular parcel of, of public land and make sure that you cannot walk to it. Because if you can, I've been in a lot of situations where I've wasted a lot of time and come to find out I was 50 yards away from a parking area um, because I didn't go and check it out. There's some, if you're using Onyx or whatever, there's sometimes there's a, a gravel road or a trail that you can't see that doesn't yeah. show up and it leads right to the piece of property that you're planning on hunting. Um, and that's just, it's just part of it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to basically drive 
the perimeter of that whole chunk and make sure there's no access. Most of the time, if it doesn't show up on Onyx, then then I am right. But there are times where it has been. Pre- there was a time last year where I dude, I I went like four miles down the river, and I was like, I get up there and I walk up to a spot, and there's tire tracks and a parking area, and I was like, what the heck, man? Yeah, you spent all this effort to get to something somebody can walk to. Yeah, yeah, not, I I could have got there in two minutes. Yeah. you know. <laughs> And hey, it was um, fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. So so that's um that's kind of the four basic things um that I would say I think that's it. Is there one more? Oh, yeah, there's one more and that's uh being aggressive. Um when you're hunting with a kayak, you have to understand that most people are not coming at deer from the water. Deer need water to survive. They use water for an advantage for a lot of different reasons. Um bedding being one of those they'll bed close to water because they know that danger doesn't come from that, from that direction normally. So you have the ability to be aggressive when you're coming at it from a boat or kayak or whatever. If you're coming from water access, you have the ability to be a little bit more aggressive than somebody walking in. So don't be afraid to go into an area that might be really, really close on top of a bedding area or a feeding area because most of the time the deer in my experience, I've been doing this for several, several years now. And in my, even now in my experience, when I see it, when I pull up, you know, in the morning and my headlight, my headlamp hits a deer's eyes right on the bank, they're not scared. Mm -hmm. Like they'll just kind of walk off and be like, yeah, whatever. They're used to seeing fishermen out there, man. Yeah. Right. They're used to the activity on the water. And, uh, and so it really gives you the ability to be aggressive. 